Okay, hi there. Welcome uh, to a, a special revision video. Just looking uh, for a few minutes at market structures and a fairly neat way of just working through the key areas that you'll need to understand for each of them. Uh, we're going to look at something called the Structure Conduct Performance Model, uh, which is a great way of just thinking about market structures. This model looks at the key features of market structures and then how that can influence the actual day-to-day -day conduct of competing businesses, competing suppliers, and then uh, leading to that, so structure impacts on conduct, which then impacts on performance. Uh, the ways in which the market structure uh, can, can lead to different outcomes in terms of key performance measurements. Uh, you can't go wrong in an A-level or an IB assessment or an exam if you're talking about economic and social welfare and also critically different types of economic and social efficiency. Uh, your example will differ in terms of what the emphasis uh, happens to be on, but these are the main, the main market structures to revise. Perfect competition still is on the syllabus of most exam boards, although why is open to question. Monopolistic competition features heavily. Uh, so too monopoly, uh, including pure monopoly, and also uh, natural monopoly. Of course, the, the cost curves of a natural monopoly are very distinctive. Duoli duopoly and oligopoly, of course, often taught extensively. Highly concentrated markets where uh, the power is in the hands of just a few suppliers. And crucially, I think number point five is really important. You do need to understand the nature of competition between firms in genuinely contestable markets. So let's quickly work through the structure conduct performance model. Market structure uh, is basically the organizational and other characteristics of a market. I, I tend to use the word the architecture of a market. How does a market look? How, how is it designed? What, what's the kind of shape and look and feel of a particular market? And we tend to focus here on those characteristics of a market uh, that affect the degree of competition between firms and, uh, and ultimately, of course, how they price their products. So, for example, uh, how many firms are there in the market? How many suppliers? What's the size distribution between, for example, small scale businesses and much bigger, often multinational, transnational corporations? What's the market share and the market power of the leading firms? That would be a key structural characteristic. And so, too, uh, the nature of cost in both the short and the long run, including the potential for internal and external economies of scale. Market structure also affected by the existence or otherwise of sunk costs, exit costs, the costs uh, that the business might incur if, if it decides to leave the market. And we also think about the extent of product differentiation. How, how varied are the products and the goods and services available for people to buy? Uh, how strong is, uh, for example, uh, the degree of differentiation uh, for different groups of consumers. Uh, a, a really important issue, uh, increasingly significant, I think, is the extent to which firms have monopsony or buying power in the market. A lot of students revise monopoly power, selling power, but please do revise monopsony. It's a crucial aspect of the power relationships, in this case, between buyer and seller in the market. And brand loyalty is hugely important. It's, it's one of those barriers to entry in the market, clearly. It also affects the cross-price elasticity and the price elasticity of demand uh, in the market. And then that has an impact on, on conduct. So structure basically defines, describes the characteristics of a market. And market structures are not static. They change over time. Some industries, some industries for example, some markets become more contestable over time. Others become more concentrated from year to year, making, uh, giving the existing firms, the dominant firms, much more market share and market power. And uh, here's a good example of the dynamic nature of the market. Just a quick illustration of what we mean by the concentration ratio. These are the leading cinema chains in the UK and Ireland in 2019, based on the market share based on the revenue they're getting from selling tickets. So not from profits, but from revenues. And you can see that View, Odeon and Cineworld clearly dominate the market. Together, the three of them, 
just the three have have well over 60 percent of total revenue in fact Cineworld of course also owns the independent chain picture house so this is clearly a, 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 a sector which is essentially an oligopoly but we know that the home entertainment sector the rise of Netflix and Disney plus and others uh, is is a, is a significant challenge to the cinemas not least the pandemic as well so market structure changes over time here's a really interesting market or industry which you could dis describe the structure of and this is a obviously a hugely important industry um, the cloud computing market providing cloud computing infrastructure services it's now over worth 130 billion dollars a year uh, but Amazon and Microsoft dominate the market Amazon Web Service and Azure account for more than half of cloud infrastructure revenues uh, in the final quarter of 2020 the eight largest cloud computing service providers control about 80 percent of the market so this is clearly a very highly concentrated market but a really good example uh, of an industry where there's significant scale economies uh, where there is competition between providers but it's a dynamic market structure and market structure as I've pointed out is always evolving you have new firms entering a market and you have firms leaving just a few weeks ago a few months back the uh, South Korean firm LG decided that they were leaving the smartphone market to pursue other interests to allocate their resources away from manufacturing smartphones as you can see in 2020 they had less than 2% of the market which is dominated by Samsung Apple Huawei and others so that was market structure uh, that leads on to market conduct so market conduct is basically what firms actually do in in their industry and we think about this question how does market structure affect the pricing the output and the other decisions of businesses within the market so that clearly links strongly to what the objectives are so please do revise profit maximization and also non profit maximizing theories including revenue max sales max and the concept of satisficing once you've understood objectives then you move on to pricing strategies which are clearly closely linked to business objectives is there scope is there evidence and scope for example for anti-competitive behavior in terms of collusion between sellers what's the nature of interdependent decision making especially in oligopoly you can bring some game theory to that particular party what about the impact or the importance of the threat of entry for firms in a contestable market how does that affect their day-to-day -day pricing and uh, also worth bearing in mind the, the, the difference between limit pricing and predatory pricing those are two key strategies to what extent are firms competing less on price but much more on non-price competition including things like design and branding and differentiation and what are the attitudes in terms of attitudes to risk-taking uh, investing money uh, not just in physical capital but also in terms of R&D research and development so conduct is essentially the actual behavior of firms in the market well here's a fast-growing market the tablet sector and uh, you can see that in, in 2020 uh, 164 tablets globally shipped quite a significant increase on 2019 perhaps an increase in people in schools and colleges and people working from home and again crucially here you've got this enormous battle between Apple Samsung Huawei Amazon and, and Lenovo and they're the big players in the tablet market of course it's an industry dominated by Apple uh, the great economist Jean Tirol says that you should judge firms not by what the textbook theory says they do or they might do but what they actually do the conduct of firms is crucial in terms of understanding their actual decisions textbook theory is rarely 100% right but businesses can have monopoly power but not necessarily set the monopoly price so it's important to look at the outcomes in markets as well as the, the theoretical structure and that leads on to the third and final part of this revision presentation which is to think about market performance so we've gone from structure to conduct to performance and another word for performance is outcomes so what happens for example if we go back to the tablet market just quickly you know what happens to both the price and the functionality and the quality of the product over time are our tablets becoming relatively cheaper over time in real terms perhaps 
Are people better able to afford new new items of technology? Uh, are they giving better bangs for your buck in terms of the value for money proposition? That's quite important. Uh, performance includes looking at the profitability of businesses, including uh, the extent to which firms make and continue to earn super normal profit. We can look if look at efficiency performance in particular things like productivity growth, but also other performance metrics. Uh, the regulators, for example, often set um, targets for things like quality of service, uh, environmental outcomes, and, and other other uh, sort of indicators. And then crucially, and I say this to my students the whole time, you can't go wrong in an A-level and an IB exam and assessment if you're trying to link market outcomes to one or more types of economic efficiency. Allocative efficiency, largely to do with the pricing of goods and services. Productive efficiency, which is essentially about making full use of scarce resources and trying to produce close to minimum unit cost. Dynamic efficiency, linked of course closely to the pace of innovation in the market. And crucially, and this is also I think worth emphasising, social efficiency, the extent to which markets and industries give rise to outcomes which are socially efficient, for example, taking into account externalities, as well as socially equitable uh, from a point of view of, of, of fairness, both you know, within, across countries, across different consumers, and uh, across generations. So market performance is basically saying, well, what happens? What, what are the outcomes? Are, are markets delivering an efficient and equitable allocation of scarce resources? Uh, dynamic efficiency, absolutely critical. So innovation, really important. The latest um, quite well-regarded sort of listing or ranking of the most innovative companies in the world from the Boston Consulting Group came out in late April 2021. I just wanted to share with you uh, the latest findings. You know, we know that innovation is hugely important. Those of you following, for example, the vaccine and therapeutics being developed to cope with the pandemic will know the significance of innovation. The big US companies, Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they continue to dominate the, 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 the rankings. But uh, this year, several, several companies in the pharmaceutical industry are, are make the top 50. And Pfizer climbs into the top 10, which, of course, uh, joint, joint, jointly together with uh, BioNTech, um, developed and brought to market a, a very effective vaccine against COVID-19. They're now in the top um, top 10. And notice companies like Tesla also ranked very highly in terms of the innovation index. Really interesting to see what's happening to that index over time. Keep in mind that often uh, the focus of exams can be about big companies, you know, the likes of Apple and Amazon and Facebook and others. It can also be about uh, significant companies. Here's a good example, uh, Costa Coffee. The coffee market is a, a contestable market, but it's constantly changing. Costa Coffee's revenues, of course, were surging tremendously uh, all the way through to the end of 2018, 2019. The pandemic may well have changed that. And of course, the ownership changes. So Costa Coffee was acquired by Coca-Cola uh, in uh, the early months of 2019. So you may well have to write and think about big companies in, in global markets, but equally, uh, you might want to be asked to think about much smaller companies. just wanted to share with you, to finish with this chart. Uh, this chart shows the median profit, the median, not the mean, the median profit made by small and medium-sized enterprises in the UK in 2020. On, well, on average, the median profit of all small and medium-sized enterprises was £11,000 in, uh, in 2020. Uh, if you look at uh, and for, for companies with between 50 and 250 employees, the median profit was a quarter of a million pounds. So when you're getting questions about Samsung and Apple and Facebook and, and big oil companies making billions of pounds, keep in mind that uh, millions of people work for small businesses, often competing in the land of the giants, <laughs> and their profitability is often on a knife edge. Uh, as they as they try to navigate extremely uncertain economic times. So well done if you've made it this far. Uh, hopefully you, you now understand three aspects: structure, conduct, performance (SCP). We have individual sets of videos on each of the market structures that you will need 
to advise and understand for your economics papers. So search our website or search the Tutor to You YouTube channel for some great content and exam support. OK, everybody, thanks for joining in on this one. Stay safe, please. Stay curious and stay healthy. And hopefully see you all again sometime very soon. Cheers now.